Investing in blue chip stocks is probably the first thing that comes to mind. They are well established, large cap companies, and the management of those companies are often leaders in their industries and have proven themselves to be able to weather through economic downturns and market fluctuations. Long story short, blue chip stocks provide a sense of securities to investors with their steady performance. While blue chip stocks are the go-to choice if you are investing just for a little bit of extra pocket money every now and then, that style of investing is not always the best choice if you want more. You see, blue chip stocks are big companies. Have you tried to push a whale back to the ocean? Investing in blue chip stocks feel like that. The size and weight can make it really difficult to achieve the growth potential to make big money. To give you an example, Coca-Cola. This company started in 1892 and has been listed in the US since 1919. More than a century ago. Today, that stock is worth around $240 billion. The business has gone through stiff competition, different economic crises, and even world wars. And it is still standing strong today. It's a no-brainer to invest in Coca-Cola. If you have invested in Coca-Cola 10 years ago, you are probably getting around 7.2% return every year. If you're happy with this kind of performance, thank you for watching today's video. Hope to see you again next time. Just joking. I think the reason you click into this video is because you want to maximize the return of your investment. And from the title, you know I'm going to talk about investing in small cap companies to potentially make that big money. First of all, what is all these blue chips, big cap, small cap stocks in the market? Aren't they just stocks that make money for my investments? Over the years, investors have segregated the market into a few categories to help them better understand the characteristics among different kinds of stocks. Kind of like differentiating animals into mammals, reptiles and fish in a zoo instead of just calling them animals. So, let me start with the big cap stocks. There are simply stocks with big market cap. I'm talking about billions of dollars at least. They are usually the market leaders in their industries and best known for providing a steady stream of dividends. On the other hand, blue chip stocks are sort of like the best of the best of big cap stocks. Apart from having all the characteristics of a big cap stock, a blue chip company is often more well established and reputable because they have proven themselves to be able to weather any economic downturn throughout their long history in the business. For that, they are considered very safe investments and relatively lower risk compared to other kinds of stocks. If you have been investing for a while, you know that investing in big caps or blue chips can give you a solid 6 to 8% return a year. You also know that you should be able to get more than 6 to 8% a year because you have seen people making 100%, 200% with their investment. And that's where small cap stocks come into play. Small cap stocks are a company where their market cap is usually in the range of $200 million and below. Because of their size, very often they are in their early stage of growth. For example, a startup that has already been operating for a few years. If that startup company decides to go on IPO to raise money for expansion, that's going to be a new small cap stock listed on the stock exchange. Unless the startup is a unicorn like Grab or Kasem lah. That's a different story. I've made a video to talk about investing in a startup prior to their IPO. If you are interested to know more about that, check out the video over here. For this video, we are going to focus on the potential to continue to make a lot more money after these companies are listed on the stock market. Like I mentioned in my previous video, all these young companies, small companies, they are dynamic, innovative, and very often daring to challenge the norm to fill their endless appetite for growth. So they are going to try a lot of new things, trial and error, and change their strategies as soon as they realize things are not working out. It's also for survival when they do that because they don't have the luxury of time and money to fail too many times when competing with big players that are already well established in the market. I know all that sounds like an exciting roller coaster ride, but it's not always the kind of stuff that some investors would take the time to research and appreciate them, but rather just follow the big market trend to invest in the mainstream stuff, the big cap and blue chip stocks.
As a result, small cap stocks often fly under the radar unnoticed. Even so, that doesn't mean all these small cap companies are going to stay the same. In fact, they are going to grow nonetheless. They are like hidden gems waiting to be discovered and shine. So if you know how to spot them, this can be that opportunity for you to buy these stocks at a relatively lower price and later on lead to higher returns if the market recognizes their true value. What's particularly interesting is that all you need is that one big investor, say a fund manager, recognizes the true value of a small cap stock and decides to buy it, the ripple effect can be extraordinary as word spreads in the investment world and other fund managers take notice of it, they will begin to analyze and investigate the company further. This domino effect of interest can create a sudden wave of buying momentum chasing the stock of this small cap stock. Imagine it as a snowball rolling down a hill, gathering size and speed. As more big investors start buying the stock, the price can start to climb quickly and potentially make you, the early investor, gain big returns on your investment. The best part is that when these small cap stocks start getting so much attention in the market, their big competitors will start to pay more attention to them. We all know that one of the many ways for large companies to grow is by acquiring other companies to expand their current business. And very often, they will go for smaller companies because the investment is cheaper and it's easier to integrate the new company into their existing operations. When an acquisition is on the table, in order to ensure the success of the deal, the bigger acquirer will almost always offer a premium to attract the existing shareholders to sell the stake to them. What this means is that for early investors like you, you are going to enjoy a substantial gain as you receive higher price for your shares than the current market value. To give you an example, Microsoft decided to acquire LinkedIn in 2016 for $26.2 billion. Prior to the acquisition offer, LinkedIn was only trading at $13 billion, half of what Microsoft had offered. Here's another more extreme example. There's this company called Facemoji in the Czech Republic that managed to raise $3 million in 2017. They develop avatar systems for users like you and me to design a virtual versions of ourselves in the internet world. Avatar business itself is nothing new today. There are many other companies doing that. Apple has their own Mimoji, Roblox has Loom.ai, and Facebook is also developing their own metaverse that features their own avatars. In recent years, Google has been investing heavily in its AI technology. From language learning models to image generators, they are putting AI at the center of its suite of products. In 2022, Google acquired Facemoji, which at the time had already changed its name to Alter. The price tag, $100 million. Imagine you were one of the earlier investors in this company. You would have made 3,200% in this deal just over six years. But hey, don't get too excited. Not all merger and acquisition deals get a happy ending. In 2019, Pinterest went IPO and the market valued the company at $13 billion. Just two years after that, PayPal offered to buy Pinterest out at $45 billion. That's just crazy sending Pinterest stock price to all-time high. But things didn't turn out well. Just a few days after the news was out, PayPal came out to say they were not going to pursue Pinterest acquisition. There was no other information given, just a one-line statement. As a result, Pinterest shares never saw the daylight again. So, while LinkedIn and Facemoji, now author, show the potential for significant gains in small cap stocks through merger and acquisitions, the Pinterest case shows that not all deals go through and the consequences can be detrimental to investors. It's important for you to do a thorough research, understand the risk involved and diversify your portfolio to mitigate the potential downside associated with small cap stocks investment. Investing in stocks always carries risks and therefore it's essential to approach such investments with good strategy and keep watching my channel to learn how to be a well-informed investor. Remember to subscribe to my channel and I'll share more content about investment literacy. Thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you guys in the next one.